Good morning, you're 11 Advanced Maths. Welcome to Mathematics Online. Thank you for joining me. We're just gonna dive right in with a flashback question on the stuff we were looking at the other day. We've got a chessboard with 32 black squares and 32 white squares. Tanya chooses three different squares at random. So once she's picked a square, she can't pick that square again. The first question for two marks is, what is the probability that Tanya chooses three white squares? So probability of white and then white again, and then white again. All right, I encourage you to pause the video, have a go at this and see how you go before I spoil it for you. This is from the 2006 HSC Mass Advanced paper. Okay, so last week we looked at the fact that when you want to find the probability of multiple events happening in succession, you're gonna end up multiplying those probabilities together. So for the first one, if you want the probability of white and then white and then white, well, on the first one, we've got a 32 white out of 64 square chance. And now because we can't pick that square again, there's only 31 white squares to choose from out of a total of 63. And then another step down for the last one, 30 out of 62. That's our three stages. If we multiply them all together, we get five out of 42. And there's your answer for two marks. So five out of 42. The next question asks, what is the probability that the three squares Tanya chooses are the same color? So we just did the probability of white, white, white. We want to also find out the probability that she could have chosen black three times in a row. Okay, and then both of those outcomes are going to suit our criteria. So similarly, um, for finding the probability of three black squares in a row, it's pretty much the same thing because the first black one has 32 chance out of 64 in total. And then once again, each time you are stepping down. So it's the same probability as getting three white ones in a row because there's the same number of black and white squares. So it kind of makes sense. Now, if this is the probability of uh, white up here, and this is also the probability of black down here, we're saying, well, we could do either of these. We could do three white or three black. And the other day we were looking at how when you have two, I guess, ways of answering the question, when you're saying an or, you're gonna end up plussing those two answers together. So our probability of the same color is black or white. So we add them together and we get 10 out of 42, which will work out to be five out of 21. All right, so the reason that was only one mark is because we kind of already done it. We just needed to do it again and add them together. And now for part three, what is the probability that the three squares Tanya chooses are not the same color? So we just found that the probability that the three squares are the same color is five out of 21. Now this is only one mark, so see if you can think of a short way of answering this question given what we just figured out. So think about this, there's a five in 21 chance you get three of the same color. So what's the chances that you don't do that? Okay, what's the probability that you don't get the same color? Well, we're kind of talking about complements here. We're talking about things not happening. So if, a, if an event has a probability of five out of 21 of happening, that means the leftover that makes up the 21 has got to be the probability that it doesn't happen. So we can use our notation here for the complement. This is probability of not being the same color. That's just gonna be one take away the probability of the same color, which we just found. So that's why it's one mark. We can get our answer in a nice, quick and easy way. And as we spoke about in class, this idea of finding an event and then finding the event not happening is a really common assessment question in HSC. So it's worth getting used to. Okay, we're doing more work on multi-stage events today, but we're focusing uh, more closely on what are called tree diagrams or probability trees for today's heading. Let's dive into the first example. You probably would have seen these uh, in junior school at some point. So like I said in the flashback, really important concept that we covered last week about the difference between an and and an or in probability. So if you want the probability of this event or this event happening, that usually means we're gonna be adding them together. So probability of X plus probability of Y. And we're assuming that means that X and Y are mutually exclusive, so they can't both happen at once, which they usually are, if it's a straightforward question. And as we saw in the flashback, when you want the probability of this and this happening, or two things happening in succession, uh, what we ended up doing is we multiplied. And we looked at last week why that's the case, but that's our general rules we're gonna to use today. When we're saying an or, we're gonna plus, and when we're saying an and, we're gonna multiply, okay? And it always works, like magic. All right, here's our first one. We've got a drawer that has five white shirts and seven black shirts, and we're gonna choose two out at random. So we've got a probability tree here that's been partially filled in. First part of the question is, I want you to pause the video and think about what fractions 
would go on the remaining uh, five branches, okay? See if you can figure that out. All right, if yours looked like this, you are a dead set genius because that is correct. We've got seven out of 12 and five out of 12. And now because we aren't replacing the shirts, this is a non-replacement question, uh, the numbers are stepping down each time. So on our second pick, we only have 11 uh, shirts to choose from, okay? So hopefully that's kind of straightforward. Now for some actual maths, what is the probability of two black shirts being chosen? So for that second question, we're thinking about this branch here. We wanna have a black shirt picked out and then another black shirt picked out. All right, so we're kind of saying to ourselves, we want this to happen and we want this to happen. And so because we're saying and, we've got to multiply. So we're kind of multiplying our way down the branch of this tree, okay? So probability of black and black is probability of black on the first pick and then black on the second pick multiplied together. So that works out to simplify to seven out of 22. All right, now for part C, what is the probability two shirts of different colors were selected? Now this is a bit more interesting because there's multiple ways we could uh, answer this question. We could, uh, if we're getting different colors, we could get uh, a black shirt and then a white shirt. Or of course, because the question didn't specify an order, we could have also done a white shirt and a black shirt. So we're kind of saying to ourselves, well, it could be this branch or it could be this branch. And so because we've said the magic word of or, we're gonna to have to find those two probabilities individually and then we're gonna plus them together, okay? Because it could be this outcome or it could be this outcome. Once again, to find an outcome, to get down uh, the branch of your tree, you've got to multiply like we did in part B. So black and white is gonna be black times white and then we're gonna do white times black and we're gonna add those two answers together. So we're doing seven out of 12 times five out of 11. There's black and then white. Then we're gonna do five out of 12 times seven out of 11. There's white and then black. We're gonna add those two together and we get a final answer of 35 out of 66. So awesome work if you got that before I spoiled it for you. All right, on to the next one. We have a maths teacher has five M-rated DVDs, three PG and two G-rated. He decides to watch two movies at random because he's in lockdown, has nothing better to do. The question is, what is the probability he watches two movies that are the same rating? All right, I want you to pause the video and think about how we'd answer this. It's a pretty similar style question to one we just did, so you might already have a pretty good idea. All right, so two movies of the same rating. Well, there's three ways that we could achieve that. We could have a PG and then a PG again, or we could go GG, or we could go M and then M. So we have three possible ways of meeting the criteria for this question. So like we did last time, we're gonna find the probability of these three branches individually, and we're gonna say this or this or this by plusing them together. All right, so let's think. PG, on the first pick, PG is three of our 10 movies. There's gonna be a three in 10 chance. We're not replacing that DVD. We're gonna leave it aside, which means the, the fractions are gonna change for our second pick. So we're gonna have three out of 10 on the first pick. The second pick will now be two out of nine because there's one less PG movie and there's one less movie in total. All right, so there's the first one. There's PG, three out of 10 multiplied by two out of nine. Then for the G-rated picks, we could have had on the first one would give us a, uh, a two out of 10. And then on the second one's gonna be a one out of nine because we're picking one G1 and we're not putting it back. So there's G on the first, G on the second. And now for our M-rated DVDs, First one, we have a five in 10 chance. And then on our second branch, again, stepping down the numbers, we'll have a four in nine chance. So those are the three branches that meet the criteria of the question where we have two movies of the same rating. We're gonna calculate these individually and plus them together. We get a final answer of 14 out of 45. So what's that, a bit less than 30%. There you go. Fun times. All right, onto the Last one, we've got McGrath is playing Rowan in a friendly game of tennis. They both agree there is a 0.7 or 70% uh, chance that McGrath will win any given set. If they are playing best of three sets, which means that in tennis, if you win the first two sets, you've already won and you don't play the third. Okay, so that's best of three. What is the probability that McGrath is victorious? Now, this is based on actual stats, uh, based on I guess you call them relative frequencies or experimental probabilities. Mr. Rowan is, um, he's a hell of a math teacher, but his, his backhand is 
uh, is shit house to say the best. So this is actual maths here. All right. Probability that McGrath is victorious. Now, if we were in the maths chapel of D2, I'd be drawing a, a tree diagram right now, but um, I can't be bothered, so we're just going to do it without one. So let's think about the the different ways that we could achieve this outcome of my victory. So we could obviously have me just winning the first two sets straight up, and then we don't play the third because why would you bother? I've already won. Uh, I could win the first set and then lose the second, but then win the third. That would see me winning the match. Or if by some miracle, uh, if Rowan pulls off a win in the first set, but then obviously I would win the next two. That's another way that this could happen. Okay. So these are the three possible ways, three combinations, I guess you could say, of sets so that I win the match. All right. So probability of win and then win again. So on any given set, because they're all independent events for the purposes of this question, we're saying the probability I win is 0.7. So to find the probability of me winning two in a row, like we've done a bunch of times now, we're gonna do 0.7 multiplied by 0.7. Then for the second one, where we're doing win, lose, win, we'd have to do 0.7 multiplied by 0.3 for Mr. Rowan winning, and then multiplied by 0.7 for me winning the third one. So the mass is gonna shape up like this, win and win, or win and lose and win, or lose and win and win. And we could see that on our tree diagram if we could have been bothered to draw on. I recommend you do it if you need to. But there's the maths. If we run the calcs, we get about 0.784, which is about 78.4% chance, which I don't know, it seems interesting to me because any set, I've got a 70% chance of winning, which means my probability of winning the entire game is more than 70%. So there you go. Sorry, Mr. Rowan, unlucky, mate. All right, that'll probably do it for today. Uh, there's some more practice for you guys in exercise 706. I want you to just pick seven of those questions. There'll be a place for you to upload them into Google Classroom. Um, if you made it this far, thanks for watching and I'll catch up with you later. Cheers, bye.